you know, I'm kind of at a loss for words right now at um, news I got today. I mean, this was really far from what I really expected to find on social media today. But and usually when and usually when um, somebody who was somewhat of an influence, like no one really has been as big of an influence in it to me as this person was. Usually when somebody somebody passes away, unfortunately, usually in another video, I'll say rest in peace at the end of it. Like, I think I did one for Prince a while back, but, um, this one, I kind of got to do a whole separate video because this one actually is very personal to me. So, uh, I'll start out by saying if anybody is really, really just wants to listen to me talk about the Jaguars or something like that, something like that. You might as well you might as well get out of the video right now because this video really isn't going to be entertaining at all. It's not going to be funny. It's not going to be sports related or anything like that. So if this isn't what you, and like I said, it's going to get personal. So if this isn't what you want, then you're not going to hurt my feelings. Just get out of the video. So start out by saying that by saying this cuz this is going all the way back to my childhood in the early 2000s. Growing up in Baltimore, um, I didn't grow up in poverty by any means or anything like that. I kind of grew up middle cl middle class. I didn't have the best childhood, but like I had it a lot better than some people that I that I knew about. And but um. At, at times it got bad like some t like through middle school and high school like it wa I wasn't one of the quote popular kids like I cut like I wasn't like bullied so much or anything like like that but I was just more so kind of kept kind of kept to myself and had a small group of people that I associated myself with and um it got a little better my junior and senior year in high school, but like the middle school and like my early parts of high school, I just, in some senses of the word, was a loner. And I was different, and I was different from other kids. Like my whole, like most kids, their idea of like having fun, you know, you know, going to the movies, bowling, the ball, stuff like stuff like that on dates with their with their girlfriends and which I didn't really date anybody I didn't date anybody from my high my high school I did like I never date like I never once dated somebody who went to the same same school as me so as I said I was kind of loner but that was their idea of fun my idea of fun and some of my friends idea was fun was do well, it wasn't too constructive it was doing it was doing dumb shit causing chaos being stupid Going by the tracks, doing thing, going by train tracks, and doing stuff we weren't supposed to do. Um, fucking shit up, basically. Like a lot of a lot of stuff, kind of was, you know, not too constructive. But one thing that me and a couple other people all kind of did do for fun that was constructive. Was going to co was going to concerts and shows and stuff like and things of that nature. More in particular, rock, more in particular, rock shows. Like, I'll still say even to this day, a rock show is the best show to go to. And um, I saw a bunch, a bunch of local bands before I saw the band, the band I'm about to talk about. But um, my very first major concert that I went that I went to as a kid was um, happened to be a band that was really one of my favorite bands gr growing up probably was my favorite band growing up and that was Lincoln Park I growing up anybody who knows me will tell you I was well I still am really I'm a huge huge Lincoln Park fan I got the privilege to see this band twice when Hybrid Theory first came out. I thought it was. As a matter of fact, I still think it's one of the greatest music albums ever put together. And um, 
you know, some day and some days I would be some days I'd be mad at the world and lock my and lock myself in my room, not even want to talk to anybody. And like I might throw in a video game or like look at the computer and stuff like that. But I would always have music on, and I'd say probably eight point five to nine times out of ten, it was either like it was either Hybrid Theory, Meteora, or Reanimation from Lincoln Park. Like it apps like they absolutely were a be-all, end-all for me. Like, they were just incredible. Like, and we we lost Chester Bennington today. Him in, him in particular, like, I thought, you know, you look, at the, you look at this guy, and he, like, this is the lead singer of this, you know, rock band, like, guy looks a little scrawny and shit but like through it up but through it all like he um a lot of people remember him as the crazy white guy who screamed a lot for Lincoln Park but if you really look into the genius of his music he was a um he was a phenomenal lyricist and really had a very underrated singing voice and you know, I know people with, and you know, I know people with Lincoln Park will be will t will tell you like, all oh, nothing's ever gonna be as good as hi Hybrid Theory or Meteor, or they lost it after me, or everything has sucked since then. Like I know there's people like like that out there, and admit it, and admittedly, the third album, Minutes to Midnight, Midnight, other than a couple songs, I really didn't like, and then just after that, after that though. They still put out good music, but I just, but yeah, as many, even if Chester had lived on, all the albums that Linkin Park could have done probably wouldn't have equaled the success of Hybrid Theory, sorry to say. But at the same time, they were still, to me, a great, a great band, and um, I'll still always be, always be a fan. Absolutely, always, and you know, just to hear this, just to hear that this happened, like committed suicide, just more so. I was more so. I'm thinking, like, why? Just as successful as you were, and as loved as you were by many people, and having, you know, being married currently, and having six kids, and you know, from. What I've learned about, uh, I never met Lincoln Park in person or anything like that, but from what I've read about, from what I've read about Chester, like, really one of the, really one of the nicest guys you could meet. And, and also, and really the fact that this band has stayed together, all the original members, through everything that's, go through everything that's going on is very rare nowadays. So, to do so, really, to do that for you have to real you have to really be good guys and be able to work to, be able to work together, and that's really and a lot of the times it falls on the vo vocalist, and that's a big testament for him to be able to do that. But um, yeah, growing yeah, but yeah, growing up, you know, Lincoln Park was a very huge influence on my life. Like it got me through a lot of hard days. Like their music was like their music in particular, along with a couple other bands I listened to, like was almost like therapy to me. Like just when you're mad and can get out frustrations, you know, just blaring that shit, and you know, even though it pissed my mom off, it it was kind of the answer. And uh, just. Really suck, and you know, it just really sucks to hear about this. Now, as far as as far as you know, the rest of Lake and Park and what's going to go on with them, because like I, because they were supposed to go on tour, and I, just because it's been so long since I've seen them, I actually was considering maybe finding someone to go with and getting t and getting tickets just for the show, just to see just to see them again. But um. Now it's 
tough to say what's even going to become of this band, whether, you know, it's over, they're going to replace the singer, or just Mike Shinoda's going to do it all himself. But, uh, it's unfortunate, unfortunately, though, with bands now, with bands really, you know, sometimes it's easy to replace a guitarist or a drummer, but as unfair as this sounds, a vocalist is um, in a lot of ways the identity of the band and when you replace a lead singer it it doesn't always work and rarely it rarely works the only band i can think of i'd say within the last 15 years that it has worked was escape the fate and i guess three days great race too a little bit some of their songs are pretty good it's not as good as the original but like some of their songs are still pretty good. Like, I'd say it's still kind of successful. But, if you really think about, if you really think about it, Chester's that type of singer where, like, you couldn't imagine the band without him. And, like, like others, I mean, could you really, could you really imagine Metallica without James Hetfield? Could you really imagine Korn without Jonathan Davis? Could you really ima imagine, um, System of a Down without Serge Tankian? Could you imagine Falling in Reverse without Ronnie Radke? Could you imagine Black Veil Brides without Andy Beersack? Would suck. I mean, there's several others I could I could name too, but you get my point. And one thing I will one thing I will say: there's always some things in my life I'm very proud of that I got to, that I got to experience and got to do. And as far as like seeing certain artists perform there are certain guys that are like icons that I'm happy to say that even if I'm not necessarily a huge fan of the band like I'm happy to say I can t say that I saw them in concert like Billy Idol's one of them um which uh Foo Fighters um Metallica Limp Bizkit Stained, and now, well, really, before, like in Park. Um. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned the Temple Pilots too, but I get did get to see them before Scott Wildman passed away. It was actually at that Lincoln Park concert. They all played together. But um. I was up, but. Just to close this out, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to the band, Chester's family, his kids, his wife, everybody really affected by this, even more so than I, even more so than I am, because you know I'm just a fan and was just influenced by his music. I I can only imagine what people are going through that were close to him, because it really sucks to see something like this happen to this great of a guy and talented and as talented as he was and um, I'm not going to try to turn this into like uh, me preaching about suicide or anything like that but just anybody just anybody if you're going through some something that's never the answer it can get, it can get better I know people that have attempted suicide and trust me there's help out there it can always get better so please don't do not ever do not ever do that because you're hurting so many other people beside yourself and, and and you really don't have to be f be famous just to, just for me to say that, but there is but there's help out there, and it's never an answer. Well, anyway, that's about it. Very sad day. Chester Bennington committing suicide at the age of 41. And uh, if you're watching this from the other side, Chester. Uh, rest in peace, man. You were. Huge influence on all my life, and um, we'll never for and um, we'll never forget the days of Lincoln Park. And you know, I'm probably still I'm probably still going to be listening to him for a week. I've been listening to him all day, and I'll I'll probably be listening to nothing but Lincoln Park for a, for a little bit. But um, anyways, Jess Bennington, rest in peace, man. I'm out.